Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support the show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to episode 103 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. We're away on holidays, but we're not abandoning you yet. Indeed, we're here to talk about Fallout in one of our more narrowed down videos. But as always, today, I am joined by my lovely co host. What kind of shirt is that that you're wearing, Cog? We're doing, we're doing a little bit, Des. We're doing a little Ghostwire. That's Tokyo. Ghostwire. Okay. You know, I saw the arrow at the top and I was thinking of Skyrim. You know how they have the arrow oh, marker yeah. on the top map? I, was, I know it wasn't exactly that, but it reminded me of that. I'm trying to keep the Bethesda theme. I never had anything really fall out. I don't think about it, which is mm-hmm. kind of embarrassing. I was like, I don't have anything fallout. So I was like, yeah, I got to work on that. Yeah, I should have dressed for the occasion. I have a million fallout pieces of clothing. I wore Dragon Ball today. So. No doubt, but yeah, man, that's good. We got my man in here. I, like, listen, man, I'm so happy we got Ivan in here. This is the OG Anchorman V. People don't know, true story. I call him the shadow broker. You know what I'm saying? He's the <laughs> one that discovered ILP. He's the one that, you know what I'm saying? We used to be on the network together, and it's really cool. So it's good to have him. He's the biggest Fallout fan I know. And to have you two in the room, this is what I've been waiting for. So I'm like, this yes, is sir. awesome. So salute to my man for this special occasion of Duke. Well, Ivan, welcome aboard, man. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to have you here because indeed, as Cog said, as I said, we're going to talk a lot about Fallout. We want to talk about the future of this franchise. It's definitely in an uncertain position to kind of set it up. We all know 76 is currently existing. It's doing its thing. We have the Fallout TV show on the way. We've seen a couple of screenshots of that. Otherwise, it feels like not much is on the horizon beyond a Fallout 4 next-gen update. We haven't heard word of remasters, remakes... We know Fallout 5 is coming after Elder Scrolls 6. That's going to be a while. So I thought it'd be good here during the holidays for us to finally put this conversation to rest for a little bit. You know, it's come up in Cog and I's talks, mostly mine, because I, I end up ranting about it. So I thought, let's get that all out of our system for the year until it begins again in 2023. And let's just talk about the future of what I think is one of Xbox's most important IP now. Like, that is one angle we definitely need to look at it from, but... I want to begin with with Fallout 76, right? Because this game does continue to get updates. But one thing we also learned, and I think it could be easily inferred from just looking at the game, is it's got a small community. Um, it's got a supportive community, but it is a small one. And that was, again, firmed up by some of the documents we saw in the Activision Xbox deal where they had a spectrum of how large community was for particular games. And 76 was on the smaller end. Ivan, I want to dish it to you right off the bat just so people can get familiar with you and your experience with the franchise. Do you play 76 at all? And uh, how do you feel about where we're currently at with this series? So, I mean, for me specifically, I I came into this, well, the Fallout franchise fairly late uh, comparatively. Um, I jumped in and started playing around 2011. Mm. And the it was funny because the first time I played Fallout 3, I hated it. And then I played New Vegas and completely turned around. <laughs> so Interesting. Uh, so for me, playing Fallout 76 is I enjoy it compared to ESO because like I tried I tried playing ESO and I just couldn't get into it because it felt like MMO. But 76, I just really enjoyed that comparatively because it didn't feel like MMO initially. It felt like a Fallout 4 multiplayer. And I enjoyed mm-hmm. that. And I used to play religiously. I'm actually pulling out my stats now. I think the last time I checked, I had like 300 hours or something. In 76, um, sir. Oh, yeah, he, yeah he's about that like, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he about that like, yeah, exactly, exactly. I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you realize where you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Respect, nah, that's his game, no talking. Yeah. Well, no, I, no, I that, that balance it. things out here. Otherwise, it would be a complete trash fest. <laughs> well, because like, even, even whenever 76 dropped, I actually enjoyed the emptiness factor of it because mm. it felt like they really were flexing story, like that whole like found footage storytelling type issue where it's more, you're not going to have NPCs telling you what to do. Go here, grab this for me necessarily. I mean, you have that element of it, just it's fetch quest design, but then it was more like, Hey, you're finding someone's account 
uh, a recording and you're kind of picking up on clues from that. And I really enjoyed that level of storytelling just because it was one of my favorite parts of like Fallout 4 and even 3 in New, in New Vegas, just finding random stuff. Mm. And just these weird stories that were you know, entrenched in it. And so, but recently I've really, I've kind of just turned off from 76. And Good. Good. it's going to sound really, really petty. It's the Uh-oh. crap that are killing me right now. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's really hard to play that game right now. Mm-hmm. Like, even though like on the, on the series X and even on Xbox one X, they have uh, this FPS boost, but even then, without like a native patch it's really hard <laughs> mm-hmm. that's real that's real but, Carl, how about you i mean I, I know the answer to 76 but you know where do you stand with this franchise comparatively speaking to ivan and i who adore it no fallout i'm late i'm a late bloomer um mm-hmm. you know i didn't really know much about the original games and and then obviously when they got the rights to it from an exile and then you know obviously todd recently commented about how they wanted to keep the flavor the integrity of the game but then put their spin on it in kind of like that elder scrolls engine and i have to admit it, it really caught me i remember no, i'm actually i'll take it back when yeah. i first saw it i was like nah i was like i'm not fit. i was like why is everything green and brown i mean i understand yeah. it's a fallout but i just did the color palette turned me off and i was like why are people raving about it yeah. and i was just like i don't know and I remember people were like, nah, man, it's really fun. And I came into a very negative, like begrudgingly. You know how I get sometimes, Matty. I'm begrudgingly what forced to try something. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. And then I'm trying. I'm like, and I remember when it hit. And it was Vats. When I found out what Vats was, I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. This, this, right. I could target the leg. I could target the arm. Like, it just, it blew me away. And it, it made every combat encounter just very tactical and fun. And I was just like, oh, this is fine. And then as I got to the story and the whole, obviously, even when you start the, the, the writing, I thought was just really good with like Fallout 3, excuse me. And, um, you know, I, I just really fell in love with it. That was the game that really set me over the top that, you know, DC and, and just shout out to the cops. The cops agree. They yes, like, yes, they cop. do. <laughs> they are like, that was it. So, <laughs> so what happened was, is, you know, just the whole idea of, this civilization and you come out in that moment when you step out on the, you know what I'm saying? Out the vault. Yeah, step out like, moment. I can't. Yeah. I was like, nah, this, this is it. And I, I fell in love with, with this series. And yeah, from that point on, I've been with it. But for, to, to the to initial question with, with 76, yeah, that would, that would hurt. That would hurt for mm-hmm. me because I was, you know, Ivan knows I'm a big Destiny guy. That was kind of like our, our mini battles back in the day, you know, when which game was the most played on Xbox. And we'd have these, and to Fallout's credit, Fallout would always be in the top, like Fallout 3, Fallout 4, that kind of stuff. And 76, I'm like, all right, this is an opportunity for them to do something really special in the space that I kind of like. And it was kind of the, the technical issues, the graphics, and it just really didn't appeal to me. And then the killer for me, that's why I said the Fallout 3 story, was, and I understand why, but no vats mm. killed me. Mm. And I know it's why. It's but it doesn't slow down time. Right. It's not. And I, I get it from a technical standpoint, but it just broke because to me, that's Fallout's number one feature for me. Yeah. Like that is revolutionary. Yeah. So that was why. So I was like, eh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm good on this. And I saw Todd come out and have to do the Mia, Mia Cope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he did. He did have to come out and do a little, a little apology, which was interesting yeah. to see. But um, yeah, you know, I, I don't think I ever talk a lot about my my history with yeah. Fallout. Just people know I love Fallout, but yeah, I, I I do have a similar experience to Ivan in the sense that I tried it, hated it, and then a buddy of mine mm-hmm. lent me his copy of Fallout Three again. And I loved it. I don't I don't even I couldn't tell you what clicked. I think I just grew up a little bit in that that year span. Like, mm-hmm. I really think I just went in 2009, played it. and was like, yeah, yeah, this is it. I actually really like this a lot. And so, um, you know, after that, I played New Vegas because, you know, that was a year from that game coming out. I remember I bought New Vegas day one cycle repeats again, man. Fuck New Vegas day one. I did no. not like vanilla New Vegas. I still like vanilla new vegas but i think that game was absolutely saved by modding in a lot of ways um but new vegas i do respect and love but i i again think that game it's it's setting never clicked with me still doesn't i just don't 
like and it's funny because i played fallout one and two shortly thereafter and i like the setting for those a lot and it's in the same locale but i think it's just an art style thing at that point but yeah i was very up and down with this series and fall four comes around i love four but it's definitely flawed and you could see the steady decline coming now and then you see 76 drop and even i who adores bgs games just it was inexcusable as they know and i know they were aware of that and they continue to say they're very aware there were a lot of problems at launch but they're also trying to emphasize like but now it's much better and the reason i wanted to start with 76 is to me this is roadblock number one when you look at things that are barring the progression of this series barring the progression of maybe bethesda splitting off a team to get a fallout 5 to us earlier or barring the progression of a remaster from one of the smaller Bethesda studios, I think 76 is that number one culprit. The reason I say that is just based off facts. It's a small community. It's launch, which was very damaging to both the reputation of Fallout and Bethesda, that they can't do anything super ambitious with the game now and monetize like an expansion such as Destiny 2 does, because if they charge anything, especially now into its life, they saw how that went with fallout first. That was probably the last thing they needed to charge for was a subscription service. They should have tried to charge for actual quality content and built it up that way, but they never did. And so unfortunately the series has suffered permanent damage, but if you got it out of the way and it's smaller community, what lies beyond that? I'd be keen to find out, but I'm curious if you guys see it as the same roadblock. I do that. If you don't, solve 76 and more than likely shut it down you're probably not going to get the fallout remaster remake the the even the next gen port was long overdue for fallout 4 it was fps boost and then finally in 2023 we're going to get something for it Uh, so to me it seems like this is just a huge obstacle that i understand and respect why people have enjoyed it but i wonder if it's because it's only what we have the option to enjoy because fallout doesn't have many other options outside of modding games that you've played a lot of times before right what you got anchor so also i would have mentioned now i just looked i finally got my stats up and i'm actually kind of embarrassed i have uh uh, i have 714 hours yeah you can speak more authority (laughs) than me i think i'm in the 200 area just from like testing on playthroughs and stuff so you 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 really dug deep into it what was the updates that kept you around um, so for me, what I was doing was, uh, I actually really fell into love with the whole settlement system. I, I was, really I was really waiting for this it. part. Like, I was it, waiting for this part. It, it is, they <laughs> put in so much random stuff and I just, I've enjoyed doing it. Um, I actually enjoy doing the community aspect of it. Um, I was like, if you keep hearing the jingling thing, that's my cat wanting to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, you're good, sorry. You're good. um, so with, for me, I just I enjoy the settlement aspect of it. I'm that person that if you log in, I'm normally uh, I've set up my base like right outside the spawn, and I just like give people free stuff. That's what oh, I do. So, um, okay. I've enjoyed doing that. I've been doing that for the last few years, uh, with the exception of like the last six months, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because I just I haven't been playing it. And for me, I think the problem was like let me talk about the strengths of seventy six. I think the biggest strength of seventy six is it kind of fleshes out dumb little lore bits that i just enjoy uh like mm-hmm. the whole pioneer scouts thing which they never talk about or touch on in really any other franchise uh or not franchise any other entry uh they've done they've talked more about these like these weird little pulp fiction things like they had the the unstoppables that they teased in fallout 4 uh but they've, yeah. they've had these fun little aspects and i enjoy those and for me, that's what keeps me coming back if I come back recently. Um, but the problem now is they are trying to make this like ESO, not so much in terms of structure, but more in terms of we are going to have these really big content pushes and we're going to try to do this expansion model similar to ESO just so we can keep you interested enough until 2030. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem I see with 76 is that it's just going to be like this hulking Frankenstein's monster. That's just going to keep getting more patches onto it. That's going to just try to get people just to cross the finish line. So people don't abandon fallout before fallout five. <laughs> mm, and I, I'm, I'm afraid of that. I'm so with you. And, and that's my fear. 
That's my fear because it's it's almost like it, it's and I hate to be you know brutal about it, but it's the fallout game that the majority of community outside of five <laughs> does not want. And it's just like it, it, it's it's they're in a tough spot because they they've burned that that moral cachet that of but that it did a lot of damage. We gotta be honest, like this game did a lot of damage to their reputation. But there's this reputation prior to this, from what I remember, right? What well, is it's very illustrious, very esteemed. They were given every benefit of the doubt because they had the track record to prove it. They, yeah. These are the creators of, you know, Fallout New Vegas and and and, and what you call it, and three and four and stuff, Elder Scrolls. And it just they just don't miss. Right. So this is like the first major miss. And then they kind of had to take the egg in the face. And at that point, the reputation became, you know, for the first time I saw them kind of the reputation take a, a serious hit. And I think what has happened now is that, like you said, Maddie, that I feel that. Because they 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 did the Mia Culpa, they they made it right, right? It's in, and then they got the Game Pass deal. We even heard stories of Todd going to Phil and or you know having a conversation mm-hmm. like this is you know really a down part for a down part of his career. How do we you know kind of help him get through this? And they they work together to turn it turn it around. But I think ultimately because of its kind of rehabilitation, that is blocking the next Fallout game. So it's kind of like. Yeah, we we want to do it. We're going to do it, but you still kind of have this, and I think that that's the the frustration. Because if if the support is to what Ivan is saying, you know, t- for as long as it's going to go, that means they're not willing to let this thing go off into the sunset all the way yet, and that right. that's my concern. Because yeah. th- th- part of me feels like, oh, it kind of needs to have a cutoff. Yeah, <laughs> it, it feels like they're holding on to it for themselves rather than what the fan base would be interested in and again that's not denying that there are people such as ivan who, who have played yeah. the game a lot and have enjoyed it and found enjoyment in it, and that that's important to acknowledge but mm-hmm. um what's happened is it's become so feeble of a product in my eyes that mm-hmm. if something were to dare to exist next to it in the same franchise it would kill it because they know everyone would probably run to it and any chance of growth there would be smushed right. and i think that's something that they're truly afraid of is well, we don't have an answer right now. And until we have an answer, when do we drop that answer? Because it may hurt 76. And I think the reality that's coming to them, if they haven't accepted it already, is can that, you know, 76 won't grow beyond what it is. Um, it's mm. it's gonna it's gonna keep being cannibalized by its own fan base. Um, and I say that because I know like with the trifecta of monetization they have there, the atomic shop the subscription service the battle pass you know all three of them are there and it's just the same loyal group of people buying and buying and buying and buying in constantly and that's what's keeping that game afloat are the very loyal people and that's why they are always up their fan base's ass like yo y'all are amazing it's because like yeah they keep the the product afloat without them that thing is dead as gone as good as gone i mean so I just find 76 to be that roadblock. And I I bring that up first because I do want to transition to the Fallout TV show. We know we're going to see Fallout be experienced in a way that we haven't seen before, which is, you know, on the big screen, effectively. We're not going to see it in a video game format for the first time ever. And I bring this up in tandem with 76 because I'm curious, Ivan, if you share the same fear that I do, um, which is... When you look at what happened with The Witcher and The Witcher Netflix, when you look at Cyberpunk and Edge Runners and and the and the retrospective growth, I do worry that a lot of people's first introduction to Fallout will be 76 after the possibly great Fallout TV show. Like, oh, I got that itch. Hey, there's a game series. What's this new one? Oh, 76. Let's try it out. And it's like, oh, this is the online series now because there is clearly a conflict of identity within this series. And a lot of it has been done by Bethesda, right? You have it as, in first two games, isometric strategy games. Bethesda takes it, makes it first slash third person open world, as we know. They hand it to Obsidian, they do it. And and to a lot of people's opinion, and I would understand and in some cases agree with this, school Bethesda, Fallout 4 drops. It's more of three, but a lot of people view it as inferior to New Vegas. Obsidian becomes the champion. Bethesda stays stubborn, drops 76, and it's the worst series entry in the franchise. So you have that conflict, conflicted identity, and then you have the show coming out. Where will that fan base end up? And Ivan, do you have any concerns about where they may end up if that surge is to occur? So 
and it's funny that you bring up uh, oh, CD Projekt Red because I was thinking about that earlier, and I, I, don't, I don't view, first of all, I don't view the 76 as a complete failure. I view this more along the lines of Cyberpunk 2077, where hmm. they can't do anything that they would have done. They can't capitalize on the goodwill they got with Witcher 3, or in this case, they can't capitalize on the goodwill that they got with Fallout 4. And because they, they tried and it didn't really work. So they're in this weird position. And I think overall, I don't think a new Fallout game would cannibalize 76 unless it's a mainline entry type of game. Hmm. So like if it's like a Fallout 5 or even like a Fallout New Vegas kind of thing. Yeah, that would probably hurt it. But if it's a smaller type of title, that's a different story. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit later with a, a, couple, a few other topics. But with the show itself, they are trying to make it so the show is completely separate. Yeah. Um, I know we, Todd Howard had his uh, statement earlier. Is it this week or last week? I don't know. We're at that point where everything blends together. Um, but <laughs> uh, saying that it's a completely separate narrative. And I don't know if that's in... Well, it would be a separate narrative, but I think we're going to see familiar characters. So look through the cast. He list. said there will be references to the games. So yeah, what, whatever I, that I ends up that. meaning, we shall see. Well, I looked at um. There's one. Uh, Aaron Moten is going to be playing Maximus, and looking through Maximus, that lines up with uh, Fallout Tactics. Mm. So he's well. If we're going to be a reference of some sort, uh, that means Chicago area, uh, Brotherhood of Steel. But then, like they mentioned, another character, um, one other actor is uh, Mike Doyle, and he's playing a guy named Mr. Spencer, uh, who well, there is a Mr. Spencer in Fallout 4. So mm. it could be around that area where it's just kind of an introduction to certain things. And so I think the way they're, the way they're setting it up is with the next gen, uh, well, with the next gen patch for Fallout 4 is they want Fallout 4 to be that welcome pad. Mm, okay. I like okay. That. I was, that's where I was going to go with it too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like they're they're setting that up to be like, hey, you want your first Fallout experience? Here it is. If you Got want it. something else that's a that has a little more content, like lengthwise, then we have seventy six. But Fallout Four, we want you, that to be your welcome map. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Kyle, you, you agree? Please jump in. Yeah, I was going to jump in. I, I literally, that's what I was, me and him were on the same page because remember, Maddie, we were, we just, we felt it was kind of, I don't say random, but just recently, you know, Fallout 4 just got the free, you know, upgrade to performance modes and all, all that stuff and the bells and whistles. And I was like, okay, what's the mentality behind that now and this late in the game? And I'm, I'm just thinking, I said, well, maybe it's to coincide with this eventual TV show because mm-hmm. to Ivan's point, they're going to need a reference point. There's going to be people who are going to fall in love with this universe. I mean, this is, we sure. all love this game. So it's just like, it's a, it's a great story. So like Todd said, if you pick a pocket of the United States in a place that hasn't been necessarily told yet, but you still have some familiar characters and just the idea of the vault and the po- post-apocalyptic kind of environment, people after playing that, I mean, watching that, are going to be like, okay, mm-hmm. what's Fallout? And it would behoove them to lean them and be like, oh, oh you like what mm-hmm. you, okay, here's this fall. Here's this mm-hmm. Fallout 4, go check that out. And now it's the shinier version, it's nicer, it's the frame rates are up and all that other yeah. good stuff. And I think it's cool. Now, obviously, yes, what I've liked the, you know, a new Fallout game, of course, but it's just not in the cards based on their development cycle, it seems right now. But yeah, Fallout 4 would be a way for them to kind of get in. But what about you, Maddie? Are, are you are you feeling that? Are you are you happy with uh, that decision? Or, like, is that okay for Fallout 4 to be a launching point for them? Yeah, yeah. I think Fallout 4 does miss the mark in, in some areas, maybe most mostly in its choice. But as a Fallout video game, when it comes to its atmosphere its tone it is intentionally different like it's more about rebuilding restoring hope than how dreadful things are in say fallout 3 um but i think it's a good representation of what fallout is it has the the post-apocalyptic americana vibe it's got some of the best characters the series has in my opinion the companions especially i really love like shout out to kate curie like I, i love those characters man they're great Piper, one of my favorites. Um, they have McCready carry over from Fallout 3 and he's all grown up now. Like they have a lot of awesome stuff in that game that yeah, it's like that's the 
the landing pad for them. Excellent. And, you know, on the note of just a TV show, I am a little resistant initially, but why I'm loosening up is more than anything they create. It's the idea of, I hope that they continue to make expansion material in Fallout. I don't want it to be saturated. I do like the idea of it being intentional, deliberate, like they seem to be approaching with the TV show. Like we had these ideas and offers a decade ago. We said, no, we feel now's the right time. Whether that be money or they just feel it's truly the right time, I don't know. But I've always been a big proponent that Fallout is literally a universe begging for comic books, graphic novels, books to be written about it, much like Halo kind of has that. And I feel like Fallout is ripe for that. And the fact that it hasn't happened is upsetting. But what I'm hoping is through its mainstream success as a video game series and hopefully the TV show is that they will continue to explore more stories that can be told. Because right now, only one kind of comic exists that I think is tied to New Vegas. And it's a very brief one that came out around the time the game dropped. Um, So it's like a one issue thing. I I would like to see a lot more of that. I think there's, you know, because it's good to be a... Todd Howard has this philosophy, it seems, which is like when you're away from something, you miss it. And I'm like, that's good for you as the creative. Fans want more, though. That is the reality that Bethesda needs to stomach one year or another. And I think that they don't need to necessarily always need a game. They can have their book, their their maybe show in the case of Amazon. Um, I'm not asking for a Fallout multiverse, but. When we're away as fans for a while, some of us remember the good things, but a lot of us also remember the bad stuff that could be remedied. And I think for, especially Fallout 4 shine a light that, hey, some of these characters are great. And you go back to 3 in New Vegas and they also have their own great individual characters. And it's like, why don't we just have central character-driven stories, just books made about these characters? I just I could go on, but my point being is I'm pro- Amazon show strictly because I hope it really opens the door for them to say like, what else can we do here? But if it fails and I'm also a little concerned if they just go, see, see, we told you, we told you we couldn't trust anyone. And now we're not going to do anything like this again. So I Mm. really am hoping for its success big time. Yeah. And I I think that's one of the things where fallout. Well, one of the things I really appreciate this is that they are not retreading any prior narrative. Because Fallout as a universe is great for lore and world building because there's so much deep lore and that Mm -hmm. fans desperately want more background lore. Like I was looking at at pitching a a Fallout type game idea and I was trying to look at like, okay, does anyone say anything about this area? People have written hundreds of pages of stuff about places that have never even been mentioned in, in, in the entire Fallout lore and just they have written their own stuff out of it because they desperately want more and i I think one of the major things like uh well so bethesda overall i don't think they do great narratives but they do great world building and that is their number one strength and so if the amazon show fails it just means they didn't have a good narrative Mm -hmm. and i think you could pivot and move on from that if possible but it just it depends on what the well the weaknesses of the show are necessarily so Mm -hmm. I mean, it is possible. I don't think it's like an end-all, be-all thing for them. But I, I'm just glad we're not doing the same story like Last of Us is doing with HBO. I I don't really? want to see that. No, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with Ivan on that. Yeah, I don't want a retelling of a Fallout. Because quite frankly, oh, okay. like what's saying. cool about a Fallout story are the choices. I, and I mean, they come in different forms. Like it could be, which path do I go? But it, to me, it's like in Fallout 3, you can skip a ton of the intro stuff, go to Vault 112 and just leap into the Tranquility Lane segment. And the game just accounts for that. Like that mm-hmm. option on how you tackle it. Same thing with New Vegas. Like which faction do I want to align with? Like I don't think you can mold those probably like you could with The Last of Us into a show. So I like that they're saying like, hey, let's just go original. Let's do something separate. Let's make some nods here and there and kind of leave it at that. So no, I'm glad that's one of my favorite parts you... about Fallout. Oh. I'm glad that you brought that up because it's um, mm. like I, I even did the same thing with four because one of the first things I do with any game, I do like at least four playthroughs. Uh, and I, I try to break the game if I can. Um, mm-hmm. So like one of the things I tried to do was like was soon as the, like in four specifically, as soon as you get out of the vault, I went straight to the railroad. Mm-hmm. And just to see, because one of the things that happens is that Dean has to vouch for you. The idea is that he's seen you do things in the world, which is how you get into the railroad in the first place. And 
I just went straight there where you've literally done nothing and they pivot around that. And they're like, okay, yeah, we haven't seen you do anything. And Dean just lies and you have to kind of bluff with him. Mm. And if you fail the bluff, they go on a separate mission. If you succeed the bluff, uh, they just move along with the story. And Dean admits to you, he's like, I have no idea who you are. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cog, you seem a little surprised about us not wanting a retelling of a game story. Is that something you would like to see? No, I think I just misheard. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, no, no, I, you guys are absolutely correct because, you know, the, the, the identity of Fallout is you. It's your mm. story. And if you try to pin it and make it into some force thing where the characters you've already met and, and things like that, I don't think that's going to hit as harder. So I do like the idea of a unique story that has not been told with mm. maybe references around it so that you know you the hardcore will know you're in the general universe right but right. it's a unique story then it'll have its own identity so yeah i agree with you guys right on well there are many other ways they could build out this world and of course we can't have a fallout show without talking about obsidian entertainment so that's right. that's best right. known right. for Fix their work face. on fallout new vegas a lot of people have been clamoring especially since this deal with xbox and zenimax was completed to hand the series back to them for one more rodeo, especially while you have like Fergus Urquhart and Josh Sawyer there, like time's a ticking. Come on, like let's let's get a move on there. They have expressed interest. Specifically, Fergus Urquhart said, "One more game in the Fallout universe before I ride off into the sunset is on my bucket list." Josh Sawyer has recently said during his press tour with Pentiment that he can see himself working on the series again. And Jeff Grubb has said that talks are happening between Xbox, Bethesda, and Obsidian about a Fallout New Vegas 2, is the quote. So there is murmuring internally, it would seem, but externally especially. And Obsidian is sending some pretty clear messages that I imagine Bethesda should be a little less protective of their, I put this in quotes, baby, because I, I, by the way, just on a separate note, hate how protective they are of fall because i'm like it was not yours man you bought that thing you did a great job with it you handed out your baby after your first game kicked him out of your house for after one game so why are you and they made an amazing game it's like oh it's almost like you're afraid of being shown up in my eyes but i digress the interest is there ivan as always i want to dish it right back to you here and get your thoughts on obsidian making another fallout game do you think it's going to happen you got to remember their Whole slate, right? Outer Worlds 2, Avowed, whatever smaller projects, grounded support. Say it, say it strong over your chest. Grounded support. Do you I'm see it happening anytime soon, yeah. if at all? Cog, you're, you're antagonizing. What's the story? Oh, I'm trying to the trouble. He know this is internal between me and continue. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think it is an inevitability that is going to happen at some point, but I don't think it's going to be exactly what you guys want it to be. Mm. Um, and it, like, are we arguing if Obsidian has time? I mean, look, they got acquired what two years ago, and how many titles have they pumped out? Mm-hmm. Like, it, clearly, this is like Xbox's like goat studio. <laughs> oh, okay. You want to, no, wait a lot. We're not even fighting now. Okay, we got. Don't we might fight all here. All they need okay. is just go go grab Obsidian's janitor. He can probably write a better story than most uh, other people. So. Oh, oh. I didn't know we was in the same pocket. We haven't talked in a while. Uh, oh, this is great. <laughs> Continue. Preach on. Preach. Like like Insomniac is PlayStation's best studio in terms of quality and level of production. Mm-hmm. Obsidian is Xbox's best studio with quality and limited amount of production. Mm. <laughs> they, mm. I like I said, you could grab Josh Sawyer, just one person, and say, "Okay, go go write us a Fallout game." Whew. Just just mm-hmm. just put them to work. And Factual. personally, I think what they should do, and this <laughs> this part, I don't know if they're going to do it, but what they should do is they need to make a smaller type game. I I don't want to call it a New Vegas sequel, but like a New Vegas adjacent kind of game because New Vegas really is not a very long game just they did some really creative gameplay and level design where they extended the game by a half by making you not go to new vegas yet Mm. and so by forcing you to go around you are convinced that these side missions are vital missions and that these are main missions you have to do and it extends that runtime and 
if they made a smaller Fallout game, like okay. baseline experience, 30, 40 hours, but um, to borrow a term that uh, I think SkillUp said, his uh, actually his um, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 review, and I just, just stuck with me, instead of it being a mighty oak tree RPG experience, have a really dense bush that mm. really heavily relies on that obsidian writing. Oh, that, that allows you to that, do okay. multiple story arcs, and, well, not story arc, but multiple positions and different methods, similar to Fallout New Vegas, which invites more replay ability out of it. If you do that specifically and release that, that won't cannibalize Fallout 76 because it is a limited experience, hmm. but at the same time, it enhances it. But only one key thing is missing. And I think this is what the, the marketing aspect. Mm. Grab Brian Fargo from In Exile. Oh, we doing it? Mm-hmm. And just, just put him in some like executive producer position just so his name is on it. And so then you market it as the second coming of Fallout. The we Holy got the original creators. We got the best writers. We got the best yes. gameplay yeah. all in one house. And just market it that way. Put it out the door. You can oh. have people wait till 2030 for Fallout 5. Yes. Oh, I got, bro, I, I got to jump in. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm loving all of this. This is what we got to do. You, you, all you got to do is throw a JPEG and say Sawyer, Fargo, Howard, Fallout, Mic Drop. Oh, E3. Bro, they'll break E3. You just tell them that you making it. And it's this three in a small. I am so I think that. And like you said, Maddie, Vault Studios presents. Don't get me started. <laughs> Vault, they just call it Vault Studio. They, they dedicate it to Maddie. And yeah. it's dumb three. It's the holy trinity, Obsidian, in exile, but there's that you break easy this marketing. Internet. This is easy money. Phil, I know you're listening. <laughs> Bro. Listen, just, just tell Brian Fargo we'll give you 50K. Just just put your name on it. You don't have to do anything. If you want to be involved, great. Bro, just put your name on it. Pays for itself. Todd, just fill out a consent form that we borrow yeah. your baby. Just give them permission. That's it. Obsidian from a production rate. We already know what it is, right? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I just grab, grab three people from Obsidian, one guy from In Exile, and just throw a third of Bethesda Game Studios on it just so they make sure it works. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to go. And this way you don't miss out on a generation. You can't. And that's yeah. where I'm with you, Maddie. You just, it's too important a franchise to, to line it up systematically after Elder Scrolls. Come on. You know what I mean? That's just way, way too much. But yeah, yeah I'm with you. I, I don't have nothing else to add. That was well, fire. I, I'm, I am so with all of that. It's clear that Bethesda's production cycle by nature of how long game development takes is a problem here and that they experienced this with Elder Scrolls as well. Like, hey, Elder Scrolls fans, you're going to end up waiting 15 years or so until your next entry. That's also unacceptable. Yeah. Um, that that did technically skip a generation if you don't count for the many ports, and that wasn't good. And fans are upset because it's again Bethesda being a business, mind you, but really leaning into like ESO exists, and ESO is great. Like I'm the opposite of Ivan, where I actually like ESO a lot more and feel it fits that Elder Scrolls formula more for me than Fallout seventy six did as a Fallout game personally. Um, so I, I I was I'm for it, but also I understand like. This should just be a little thing I snack on in between Elder Scrolls 6 playthroughs is what should really be happening here. It should not be the direct replacement, but Bethesda says, well, that's what it's got to be. They try to make things, things that they aren't. 76 should not be the Fallout 5 holdover slash replacement. Elder Scrolls Online should not be the Elder Scrolls 6 holdover or replacement. They should stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and may they strengthen both products here. But I'm, of course, in full agreement on the idea of a studio being dedicated to the Fallout franchise because, again, this is where you got to get creative. What happens... Yeah, okay, here. Let's get a little morbid. What happens when Todd retires? Like, what are we just going to, like... What happens with the Fallout franchise then? What happens with all these franchises? Like, Mm -hmm. how long will the strings be attached? Mm -hmm. And I just think that's something that needs to be considered here that just because, you know, he's around and he has his sway and he has his power. We all know that. But we have to remember to that much like we talk about Call of Duty and the Activision deal and the importance of COD, 
I think it's easy to wash over that next to Skyrim with Elder Scrolls, that Fallout is the most important thing Xbox got out of that deal. You do Ooh. not spend $7.5 billion to be like, yes, Todd. Yes, Todd. No problem, Todd. <laughs> you spend that money be like, all right, we got Fallout. We're going to do Ooh. something with this. And they need to massage that out of his hands. Not because I want an <laughs> oversaturated franchise, but I'm saying like, bro, you cannot have these gaps for both these series mind you Mm -hmm. i mean elder scrolls is more ripe for spinoffs than fallout at least elder scrolls could benefit from an rts of sorts with all of its lore focused on wars it could benefit from so many things the fact that fallout's most successful spinoff i guess you could say new vegas was technically that but i consider it a mainline game is a mobile shelter game. Shelter. Come on, man. Shelter is fire, but come on, man. It's addictive until I had to stop playing it. (laughs) I had to stop. Yeah, (laughs) you put me on. I was like, yo, this is mad addictive. That's not right. The the fact that this series that's shown genre flexibility is its best, most popular spinoff is a, a, a settlement builder? No. No. And that's what I'm talking about with the corruption of the DNA of Fallout as a whole. And that's not me being an old head, but it's what I was saying about if the landing pad ends up being 76, just like how Shelter kind of planted the seeds of, oh, I like material management and Fallout, and then four follows up with Settlement. They bring it into 76. It's like, this was a series built on choice and consequence and morality and the darkness of war. And I feel like that's been lost in the mix of free social media marketing via Settlement mode. And I just think it needs to be considered because... Not that Bethesda has mishandled it or killed it off or anything along those lines, but I do think this series needs a shot in the arm with other creative minds involved in it, just like, by the way, any other popular thing out there, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, so on and so forth. Like You just you get different minds in on it, and Marvel, DC, and you work with it, and you take it on different angles. So I feel like Todd is a part of the solution and the problem here, quite frankly, if what we've heard is true, that he is very protective of this IP. Yeah, yeah I mean, we got to see how they handle it. I mean, I, I, it's tough because you see Obsidian, you know, talking about it, you know, and, and obviously Todd in, in talking about how I got the sense, man, he, he really loves that franchise. I really got his most recent interview and how much Fallout 3 meant to him and, you know, the, the, how much he enjoyed it, the creation process, the break between you know, Elder Scrolls, you know, coming out and stuff like that. We got to see. We got to see. But I, I'm with all of you. I think that th- there's too many intelligent people in the room, as well as Phil, to, to not understand what the, the climate is and, yeah. and, and what would be good for Xbox. So, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm getting I'm coming around now. I'm coming around a little. I'm coming around. A little. I think there's still a, a good shot that this happens. We still may have to wait, but I still think there's a shot. Something maybe not, maybe not the theatrics that I mm. wanted. But something may happen. OK, yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I think it's inevitable. Something will happen. I mean, you guys, say, will, will it be the Dream Team Vault Studios project? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but I, I think something will come out of it. But at bare Fair minimum, enough. a new Vegas, not, I mean, not a remaster, but at least going back there and at least bare minimum do what they did to Fallout 3 when they went back and um, did all the touch ups to the 360 title for backwards compatibility. Bare mm-hmm. minimum that. It, yeah. it, it's really hard to look at the 76. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, it's really hard to fall. Oh, it's really hard to look at New Vegas on backwards compatibility. Mm, yeah i'm so used to a modded experience on that one so i don't feel that pain but i totally get where you're coming from and i think it's a good transition for us to talk about these these interim solutions right the we have the fallout 4 next gen update coming next year what about remasters fallout 3 fallout new vegas fallout 1 and 2 even tactics maybe and getting those to consoles i think there's a lot of work to be done to help fans experience that because these are technically those series with legacy that Phil talked about when they acquired Bethesda, where right now the only way on PlayStation, for example, you could play fallout is via cloud streaming. That's not the best option for fallout, especially with that shooting, man. I'm sorry, but like, you're going to be leaning on vats all day. You're going to do an agility build and all that shit. Like, no, you don't. (laughs) So, I'm just saying that they need to have a solution for fans to be able to say native disc in my console. This is that game, but on my current hardware. 
Um, whereas, of course, Xbox fans have the benefit of backwards compatibility, FPS boost, all that good stuff. And that's wonderful. Uh, but I could imagine a world where, you know, Fallout 3 in New Vegas, get that remaster with that console modding support. Maybe I don't want it, but like just knowing Bethesda, the creation club in there as well. Uh, the community is there to literally give this game new life where they just have to port it forward and that is it everything else is community driven features that excite fans on their own and bethesda does not have to make lift a finger on the terms of new assets and making things for the game um and i think the bar is remarkably low in this scenario here uh, uh, many people in my personal community and i only speak for that are very much like just bump up the resolution make sure the frame rate's good and move it on ahead into the new generation, and that's it. Cog, I'm curious for you, are your standards that low if they were to do a remaster of sorts? Do you imagine any more bells and whistles than what I had pitched here? Because I know for the community, they are hungry for more, and they are just, same thing with Elder Scrolls and Oblivion and Morrowind. They're like, yeah, just come on, just bring them forward, put achievements in, that's it. Mm. Are you in that same camp, or do you want a little bit more? I do want a little bit more. I do. I, and I think it makes sense. I mean, you know, as much as we, let's be honest, the hardcore gaming community has dragged Sony for something like the Last of Us remake, remake, right? Mm -hmm. So to speak. But think about the, the mentality, right? The mentality is, from a business standpoint, is that you are literally doing the movie with Pedro Pascal, right? And all this stuff. And now you have a whole new audience that's never played Last of Us that's going to be their reference point. They'd be like, oh, wow, this is, it's, it's out, and this is game. To me, Fallout is, is that important. So Fallout, you're about to do a TV show, right? A whole group. And to me, this is low lift. This is low effort. Like, you have the assets there. Now, granted, the issue comes down to the team, right? And who's available to actually work. And I get that. And I don't know where their resources lay there. So I can't 76? say that. 76? <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> One would hope that that's Party not the C. Pardon that's the C here. Exactly. Like, I mean, look, it's at this point we got to designate, you know, I play these looter shooters. We got to designate a smaller live team, the 76, that will just deal with the upkeep and finish out the roadmap. And then whoever is the bulk on that first development team, put them towards it. But I think it makes sense because if you're not, here's my thing. If the, if, the, if the mentality is you're not going to make a Fallout 5 right now, Right. If that's the signal you're putting out, uh -huh. then you should give this community something so that they don't go a whole generation. So why not put the bells and whistles to a full? Or I even said this before, you know, we look at what was the game? We, we just talked about Witcher. Right. Yeah. Witcher one. I've never played those. Right. And now they're going to give Witcher one the Unreal Engine five treatment. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. It's a whole people generation of people that, you know, never experienced it and now get to see it in this way you know and i just think it's a missed opportunity you got all these four like and maybe that's where you can leverage fargo and those guys say hey you know let, let's get people into this universe let's let's reimagine now it may be a lot of work I, I, again i'm not a developer i know i know i have you commented the bit i'm gonna give it to you but it's like at the end of the day it's just like i just feel there's so many opportunities to do something something mm -hmm. You know, just utilize that if your plan is you're not ready for Fallout 5. People are, people are taking it, but I'm curious, Ivan, you shake your head, you're, you're, you're grumbling, you're, you're, what's going on? Where are you at? You the totally disagree. With He's like, mm. Totally disagree. So, first of all, I want to make this clear. Anytime I talk about a remaster for a Fallout game, I want Starfield level of fidelity. Mm. I want that anything going forward needs to be that level of detail. Like, mm. because that if you're going to keep this franchise for the next 10 years and there's no Fallout game, like official Fallout 5, <laughs> bare minimum, this thing's got to be a decent to look at. <laughs> so, okay. 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 Remake, right. not remaster. So, yeah. Because I think remake is important. Yeah, that's uh, what at I least, in, well, and, and for a couple of reasons. So, obvious ones Fallout New Vegas. We, that, that's, we've talked about that already. Uh, just bare minimum update fallout 3 also an obvious one we're not thinking of some bigger picture here let's go what we do 
Fallout 1 and 2. That's what I'm saying, Third person, bro. first person Bethesda game studios gameplay. Because mm. I... I try to go back. I can't do the. Like, you not doing the, the isometric the turn. turn base. I can't do that. Fallout One is really tough. I always recommend to people try Fallout Two. Fallout Two is hilarious. Two, two is easier to stomach, but for, yeah, one two was, is easier to stomach. But yeah, one is friggin' brutal. One is brutal. For the game. It's a love yeah, of man. something, man. What? What? I'm saying there's so much potential here, and because a lot of it is. Bethesda perfected the Fallout gameplay loop with Fallout 4. Mm. It's shoot, loot, craft. Because crafting in Skyrim and Elder Scrolls is like, eh, I found a better sword on the ground, I'll take it. (laughs) I I don't care. But Fallout, when they put all that effort on crafting and doing mods to your guns and settlement building and the rest of that, that is what defined that gameplay. If you get the gameplay loop and you take Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, take those stories, take the blueprint, and make it work with that gameplay, mm. people will love you forever. You don't even have to. You, well, Fallout 1 was on a time about having the, the Dream Team project if you just would have yeah. 1 and 2. <laughs> Yes. Do you Agreed. think with Fallout One, it was on a time limit? That was one that you had to get the mm-hmm. water chip for Vault Thirteen. Do you keep that, Ivan? Do you keep that that dead that death rising kind of mechanic where the, the story will end, whether you like it or not? I feel like knowing how they make their games now, they're they're going to have to find a way around that. I mean, they could do something along those lines, I guess. But man, like I so that's why I'm saying consider those remakes specifically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe Absolutely. you find something else around it, like okay, like. Hey, you reach this point of no return. Like either we got to go do this, or uh, <laughs> you're gonna get a very weird ending. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, I don't know what you do exactly with that, but I don't get paid to do figure that out. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm a big proponent of Fallout Two. Do it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, because like I'm a big proponent of Fallout Two coming back just because mm. that game breaks the fourth wall a ton. It's it's got some of the funniest Fallout moments, like when you're in Reno and you can become a porn star. Uh, there's like callouts to some of the developers on gravestones in the game. There's the phone call with the member of the Enclave where he's like, "Who the fuck is this?" Like he just because you can prank call him. Like there's just so many moments in that game that sell itself and then there's a really good story on top of all but that doesn't have the time limit. like it's a wonderful sequel uh but yeah if you could meld those two together in some weird way you couldn't story-wise but if you could meld that design because like one of the things i miss about the old fallout games when i played them um which was in 2015 for those who are wondering i love how when you exit an area there's a map and as you travel on the map you see time passing and i feel like that's a cool mechanic that they could play around with um, cause the highway man was, was awesome. You know, there's a fuel management system there. It could get stolen in a side quest. Uh, there was a lot of cool aspects to that form of traversal. And it's actually the only fallout game that just making sure, I think it's the only fallout game that has a vehicle and that does change the dynamic a lot. And that could be another wrinkle. Cause I will agree with Ivan in the sense that well, you didn't say this, it does beg the idea of, oh, it'd be kind of weird for a new generation to start with Fallout 3 and just hear like, oh, Fallout 3 remake, what about the first two though, right? You got to make those first two probably a little more accessible. At, at least at playable. Least that. Yes. I mean, absolutely. like, cause I, I, if I'm on Xbox, one of the lead platforms with Xbox Game Pass, mm. why can't I play Fallout 1 and 2? Mm. I mean, there is this thing called the Mass Effect Legendary Collection that has the compilation of all of the Mass Effects for the beginning. I mean, uh-huh. there there is a thing. There's a precedent, right? There's we money to be made. Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your game. I mean, hello, like there's there's things that can be done. Yeah, you know, well, you're not Just you're not it. wrong. No, definitely, and and um. Yeah, the the problem with Fallout 1 and 2 is like that's got to be ancient code and that's got to yeah, be yeah, even yeah. T- like that game. There are certain games that are built around mouse and keyboard nowadays that you can envision mm-hmm. based off the layout, the HUD, like everyone Actually. copies the Destiny cursor. It's like, OK, fine. But mm-hmm. Fallout is like a, a PC game through and through Actually, like everything yeah. about its management. It's the way you attack enemies. There's no button clicking. Um, 
and I feel like even the way the turn order goes, it is very old school in that sense where it's as someone who's played those games a couple of times, like it's just sometimes tough to know is my turn is it their turn. The mm-hmm. action on screen is so minuscule that you can't tell who's doing what uh, it, it, you know, if they could uh, look ter- King turn base would love a little bit of, mm-hmm. I'm guessing, right. A little bit of fallout turn base. If you could evolve that a bit more, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I feel like that then you're again, walking to that issue of like, there's a real identity crisis. Like you need to decide right. what fallout is. If fallout's going to, you know, their next fallout game, whatever it is, is just another, we came up with a new batch of ideas. Then fallout's just going to be different every series. And that's fine. But even something like Final Fantasy, when it introduces new ideas, new worlds, new characters, et cetera, you still have like those core elements to that gameplay loop, right? And you change them up very rarely. Like going from turn-based to, um, well, I should, I should say active time battle to full turn-based to whatever you want to call Final Fantasy 12 to kind of evolving that in 13, then going back to action in 15 like it was still you could feel the final fantasy in that but with fallout i don't know if i feel it in 76 versus four versus one and two they're all so wildly different so this all does need to be considered certainly if they were to progress in this way is like what is fallout and of course time being the thing the main reason we talked about this was if you were to remake fallout one or two it's like okay that's i'd be all over that but that does present the issue that we're in now which is okay well that's Five years from now, what do we do now? And that's where the remasters come up. So I don't know, Cog, did you answer in full? Like, how low is your bar for a remaster? A remaster. Like, are you are you taking um, just the bare bones? Like, oh, 46 or 4K60, you know, it's it's got its new achievement list. Here you go. No, actually, I, I misspoke. Yeah, I want the remake. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I misspoke. Yeah, I, I really want them to really put the proper treatment okay right? so really, you're not like me you do not want the easy route here you do not want the quick and easy route only because you've all, they've essentially already done it with back compat in a sense right so for at this you, point, for you <laughs> i'm just saying true there's a whole but other couple of fan bases to think that of. is true but I, you know you know why i look at the reference point hmm. gears of war one what is it the the the, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate yeah. yeah, they they've done it. They, it Gears existed. Mm. They gave it the treatment, right? Mm. Give That's it right. the treatment. This is this is a beloved franchise, and why not give that? If you're not going to do it with four, because right, if you say to me, "Hey, I still will push back if they say they want to do one," because I'm like, "Bro, you got in exile in the building. Yeah. This is where acquisitions were. They're literally down the hall." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, if the code is lost, okay, fine. I won't fight you. It's just too much of a technical case. Well, if they're but remaking at, it, I don't even know if the code actually matters at that point. Yeah, that, true, good point. Yeah, that, good that, point. That's why I said for remake. It's at that point, good you point. just follow the blueprint and do what you got to do. <laughs> exactly. And then creatively, you can sit down with Fargo's team and say, okay, this is what we envisioned. What was your original concept here? You collaborate. You made. Think about the, the roundtable talks and how fire that would be. Right, oh, dude, I'd you kill to be a fly on that wall. I would kill to be a fly on that wall, man. bro. It would be so amazing. So it's like it, the potential there. Again, they're sitting on it, and this is where I know Xbox's policy is. You know, we let everyone do their own. This is where I kind of want Phil to be like, you yeah. know, how much this would do for you know, what I'm saying for yeah. the Xbox <laughs> Game Studios and the community, like how much money. Like this is where I wish Matt Booty would be like, okay, like let's sit down. Here, let's think yeah. about this. Guys. Like, kind of a you're locking them in a room until they get a solution done. <laughs> yeah, you, we need to figure this out. Like, yeah. that that's where I'm at. But yeah, I'm definitely remake for this because, again, mm, interesting, you, you, you have all the major players involved. And I would love, I would love to go back to Fallout. I've never played any Fallout. I wanted to my introduction was three, I've like many, and that, I, I think that's yeah. totally fine. Um, Fallout 1 and 2, yeah, they're definitely products of their time. And if you're a huge Fallout fan, sometimes that's a, not even enough to overcome it. Uh, for me, it was, but that doesn't mean someone's less of a fan for not wanting to play them. Like yeah. Ivan said, there is that identity to some extent that's been established, that formula that's been established. And actually, that does bring up an interesting point for 3 in New Vegas. Maybe New Vegas less so because they at least added aim down sights. If they dropped a remaster and they didn't change that shooting, 
which I, I don't, Ooh. you know, here's the thing. I will say in def- this is going to sound fucking out of pocket, but in defense of Fallout 3's bad shooting and New Vegas' bad shooting, is that really that core to the gameplay if the shooting is good? And you got to think about that because I did not use Vats that much in Fallout 4 because the shooting was fine. And I don't know, man. Some people are just not good at FPS, and that's why they're like, okay, I'm going to... Uh, no, I didn't mean that like Slater. I actually didn't mean that like Slater. Are you in play? No, 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 no. I may have accidentally, but I did not mean to. What I'm trying to say is sometimes they lean on that. And that's why that mechanic may exist, and that's fine. I use it, and I think I'm good at it. But I just... My point being is... Do you want that shooting improved? Because I do, but I also wonder, like, what is the usefulness of VATS? Because, like, in Fallout 4, they turned it from stopping time to slowing it down. Fallout 4 VATS was, like, to me, a step below, not only just in its execution, but its usefulness. It didn't feel as useful. Hear me out, man. I, do you, Cog, as the VATS proponent here, do you want a, a big gunplay change come that Fallout 3 remaster? You just came off the disaster that is Fallout 76. <laughs> you realize what that game did not have. Right? Like, please, let's not do this. We, we have history in front of us. Now, granted, I'm not going to say that's the only reason why Fallout 76 wasn't successful. And yes, I am biased towards facts crazily. It's such a unique mechanic. They created something that no one else I've seen in gaming do. And actually, I think uh, yeah, Todd talked about that recently on, on his interview and, and the implementation of it. Um, look, to your point, yes, they could improve call of shooting. I'm not going to be against that, right? I'm not going to, if you're going to do it, I mean, you do have machine games down the hall. <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what I'm saying? You could, you know. But again, it's a different game. It's open world versus contained space. I, I get it. You know, all I'm saying is, yes, I'm, I'm all for improving the con. And I remember that was, Ivan, correct me if I'm wrong, like, I remember when Fallout 4 got announced, Part of the selling pitches was like, hey, we spoke, spoke to Bungie or Destiny people and we improved our shooting. And part of they, the pitch was brought that they, in people from Bungie to work on the shooting. Yeah, I remember that was part of the pitch because they realized it was a deficiency. They, they could, they, that's cool. They could stay where they at. Just don't take my vats away. Like, let me target, let me get the visceral nature of blowing someone's arm off. Like, yeah, like, give yeah. me that. And then the I'm not saying like, get rid of it. I'm saying that how useful is it when the shooting is good? And do you want the actual gunplay better? If you had a, if you had a perception build specifically, they gave you perks for using vats. Uh, it was, it was, it was, if you had a mixture of perception and agility, you could actually set it up so, like, on robots, you could shoot, like, the, like, a, like a, was it the self-destruct switch, essentially? Yeah. Like, but that was, like, a really hard shot and, like, impossible unless you were using bats. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, there's a potential there for it to work, but, <laughs> um, but no, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of in between, like, there are real, like, if they went through, I mean, if, look, if you wouldn't talk to Id, if you wouldn't go talk to, you know, Machine Games, and, you know, and then six months when they go talk to, you know, uh, Activision. <laughs> so, <laughs> making Xbox the premier first-person shooter box. <laughs> I mean, you, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of potential there for really good shooting gameplay. I think VATS will always serve a purpose. I'm just not sure it becomes like a, as vital necessarily, but it, it could serve a purpose for it's a certain time to make something new, possibly right, like a new system alongside Vats. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Like I was thinking, maybe treat Vats more like an overlay specifically, like it's still activating in real time, but like you know, you activate it specifically, and maybe with certain perks, it has that slow down, maybe even stop effect. But mm-hmm. at a bare minimum, it's just like a, oh, here are my enemies on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, I, I love that you could shoot like throwables in bats too and whatnot. Oh, that so that was cool. awesome. Yeah, I love yeah, that. So cool. there are ways to evolve it, but it was just a little thought exercise I wanted to put you, you both keep, through. You, you keep your thoughts to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess really here as we reach the concluding moments of our show, we know that Todd Howard has said that Fallout 5 is coming after Elder Scrolls 6. So we sort of have that 2030 ish line in the sand. Like, I'm going to say 2032 because Randall Thor has just burned that friggin' year into oh, my brain. Been killing you. Yeah, he just every year is like, see you in 2032, Maddie. See I you mean, in 2032. 
if we're super optimistic, maybe 2029, but that's like yeah. extreme optimism. Everyone's firing on all cylinders. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. So all the developers have exa- been moved over to robo brains. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the line's been drawn in the sand, right? We'll say effectively. It's now 2022 as we record this. So we have a decade to fill that gap. And I guess what I want to do, again, is a little thought exercise is, Ivan, we'll start with you. If you had keys to the castle, you're, you're Ivan Spencer, right? You're able to create this kind of fallout roadmap that you also think is realistic, mind you. How would that look for you leading into Fallout 5 in, in 2032? So Fallout 5... So I've actually thought about this a lot. <laughs> mm. So the thing with Fallout 5, realistically, the location's probably going to be San Francisco. I mean, they set that up in 4. Like, they hinted at it pretty hard. Um, I'm not, like, locked into the idea. Mm. But at, at bare minimum, Fallout 5 has to be a jump in the gameplay specifically. I think there's, like, certain things they need to focus on uh, beyond just quality of life improvements i think they need to really focus on movement uh and not just being locked to you walking around all the time uh doing something along the lines of maybe like a glider boats and mm. not like yachts but you know like a, a motorboat at the most and like maybe a motorcycle but nothing bigger bigger than that and i think it needs to be a bigger experience but putting that to the side for the moment like that that's what i'm thinking of future wise Mm-hmm. of where fallout needs to go because you still gotta have something to do with all, all the crafting materials and just look it's been it's been enough time now that these engines can support having vehicles you, mm. you gotta do something um, kind of creation I, I view that in the distance but going from now and i basically got 10 years to do something um i would focus on having a team specifically for preserving the legacy of fallout, whether that be updating old games, um, remastering, remaking, doing whatever you got to do. Like I think remastering fallout 76 remastering fallout four, which they're doing with the next gen patch. Um, and then remaking one and two, something along those lines. I think that's a good thing for preservation of that franchise. That's easy releases, keeps fallout on the brain, sets up a good, you know, welcome, welcome committee for anyone coming in from the Amazon show. Great. That's Mm. fine. The other thing I think needs to happen. And we we already talked about on this, on this particular show is they need to focus on having that super game where it's, Brian Fargo, Obsidian, and Bethesda Game Studios making that smaller experience. And I think that smaller experience needs to be somewhere disconnected. I don't want it to be like, oh yeah, we're coming back to New Vegas. It, it's a the thing about Fallout is you go there, you blow up the town or you save the city. It doesn't matter what happens afterwards because it's going to ruin the timeline. <laughs> yeah, Just yep. have that set to the side and you, you got to go somewhere different every time. And I think with them, there's a couple of locations I think they could do. And I don't think they did this in two, but I remember it's a little hazy, like doing San Diego, like a okay. smaller city. There's not much going on exactly um if you want to go back to the west coast but i think two other locations are better um mm. new orleans Ooh. you could do something with new orleans that's uh, fine because focus on a really tight-knit story but do a lot of quality of life improvements like i think mean, hunting needs to be a thing in fallout because mm. like hunting rad stags i mean that I mean, it's fine. <laughs> you shoot and they blow up, and their head blows up. But it's like, okay, I want a little more detail to it. I want to like track something down. I want, I want to go. I want to go through like that Red Dead Redemption Two kind of level of hunting. Like, okay, yeah, okay. Let's let's do hunt it. down the like the King Death Claw. Like, oh yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want, I want. I want that level of ability, or like, okay, using uh, quality of life mods that they've done, like making backpacks a regular thing. In terms of like a pick up and go, okay, this is my hunting backpack. This is my questing backpack. And just having your gear ready to go and you just grab it and move on. Like I said, little quality of life improvements, major thing there. In anticipation of 
that Fallout 5 future. Mm-hmm. And okay. the other location I had, um, our friend Nicholas Downey is going to hate me or this. Oh, Sloop Fallout Dead love to Toronto. Give me that Oh, really? Oh, we're leaving the in states. The War, the states? In, in Ivan's timeline, we're oh, no, no, leaving no, the states. It is still states, technically yeah. the states because in mm-hmm. Fallout Lore, they annex Canada. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. And you, could, you could do a smaller experience and do something weird like that mm-hmm. where there's like a, maybe like a Canadian rebellion, like, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take back our country or something like that. <laughs> you, you could have a whole thing about that. And mm-hmm. going somewhere disconnected. So that overly American patriotism, that jingoist nature is weirder now because <laughs> it's in a different mm. context. Mm. And you, <laughs> with a smaller title like that, you can do something weird and then have Fallout 5 be a return to form away from the weirdness. But if it works, okay, like, you like can like do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 if it yeah. works, then you know where the DLC can go. <laughs> oh, factually. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, I, like, but for me, like, yeah, if they don't do like... So, like, for Fallout 5, like I said, I think the major thing for them is that it needs to be something that is bigger. Mm-hmm. Because uh, one of the things I, I can't, I will not go back to is if they do, after at least over 76, this is the one thing I do like, they did an entire state with 76. Mm-hmm. There are multiple cities there, and there's a bunch of, like, a variety of landscape, because I, I, I'll admit, I got really bored of walking around the Commonwealth. Like it's interesting. Flat. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a big city in here, but it's okay. But I'm like, eh, I, I, I want the state. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, bear with me. I want okay. Fallout Carolina. Oh, <laughs> sir. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm saying we got mountains, we got beaches, <laughs> we got okay. swamps, we got yeah. deserty kind of plains. You got all the biomes. You got we different got, biomes. We got all you want. Oh, you want you want like a whole story arc about like college, like college football, college basketball rivalries. <laughs> we got colleges galore. <laughs> Like you want to do Fallout Pirates? We got the home of Blackbeard. We, there we go. Okay. You you want to add gliders? We got the Wright brothers. It's all right there. You can do anything you want. <laughs> you want you want boats? You want gliders? You want motorcycles? You got anything you could possibly want that would fit in a variety of biomes? Because I even seventy six, it's mountains in a swampy area. Yeah. It's like eh. It could be better. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I feel Cog, in, that, in that, your... that's my blueprint. Like what's it. your blueprint, Cog? You know, you got till twenty thirty two to line something up. What's what's dropping maybe year by year for you? What do you want to have happen, Cog Spencer? Yeah, we gotta um first we gotta line up this movie. We know the 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 line between gaming and entertainment has now blurred. We're you want wait? Now. You want a movie, not a show. You want a movie. Well, we could do the TV show. I meant to say, you oh, know, so the TV okay, show. Sure yeah, get you. the TV show popping, you know, because this way you control it better, have, have a better narrative there. Um, yeah, we, we got we got to align. We got to take the Jim Ryan blueprint here, mm. and we're gonna have to align it. Yes, I am saying <laughs> the Jim Ryan blueprint, and we got to align it with a Fallout game. Re, you know, re- you want just one Fallout? <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep it in it. No, I don't. We don't just want Fallout. Last Fallout going back on now. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't. We are not going to third person over the shoulder. Fallout. No, okay. Fallout is Fallout. Oh, oh I, I apologize. Don't be oh. scared of the community. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, Jim Ryan oh. is just align it, whatever this remake is, right? In conjunction, if you can, in conjunction with the release of the TV show. So that's where you got the. Oh. Get the that's where I'm going, got right? You. So Sorry, you do I'm that. familiar with another Jim Ryan special. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fix your face, Ivan. <laughs> so we do special. that. <laughs> we do that. You get the buzz going. People are hype about Fallout. And then I lean into what I would say, which is pretty much, you know, and Maddie, which is, you know, the fictional Vault Studio. You, 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 again, you keep that preservation of the title and you really start to now brainstorm, okay, what are we going to do? For right now, during this current generation, the Series X and S generation, long tail, because we anticipate this to be a longer generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we may get a, a console generation mid, mid, uh, mid generation refresh, but we will most likely be here for a while. Then 
we talk Fallout 5 long play mm-hmm. whenever after, you know, post Elder Scrolls 6, and that can be that. But yeah, I, you cannot miss out on Fallout this generation. It's just that simple. So I don't really have too much else to add to it. It's just that, you know, this is where Xbox is going to have to have a little stronger hand here. You know, they've they've shown that they 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 can execute it when it comes to 343 when <laughs> they want things to happen eventually and they're not happy. This is where you listen, at the end of the day, you bought these these studios. The I'm Lord Acquisition, you brought them. They have to at some point do some of the suggest your boss suggests something. It's in your best interest to listen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if you just happen to slide this memo or this email, you know what would be great, guys? (laughs) Figure it out. Figure it out. That's it. Have have a basket, walk down the halls, knock on the (laughs) door and say, who wants to work on a Fallout game? (laughs) Exactly. Bro, just put little vault boys in front of all their studios doors and the offices. So remember this, remember this guy, how Mm -hmm. awesome he is. Figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. And then I'd even make the the icon of the studio vault boy to a different pose with the face in it. Bro, it sells itself. (laughs) I agree. Could you imagine that icon to where you see Xbox Game Studio, you see vault boy face. Look at the smiles. Everybody's excited. Mm -hmm. You know that they're dedicated. They'll be the coalition to Gears as is to fall out. Like, come on, let's go. Now, if I'm Matt Spencer and I'm stepping into the room and I'm laying out this blueprint, I'm laying out what we're going to do until 2032. It's a really simple plan, honestly. Okay. We don't. We got to wait out Obsidian, in my opinion. It's going to effectively go, what am I filling the gap really until like, I'm going to say 2027, 2028. That's where I'm kind of looking right now because to me, they're going to go up first. Bethesda's going to be very busy until... Elder Scrolls 6, Obsidian's done a great job managing multiple teams. Some staff is freeing up, particularly Sawyer. So now's about the time to get crack a lack in on a little Fallout stuff in 2023. So what can I do till about 2027 or 28? I'm going to take the, the lazy river down the remaster pathway here. So I'm not doing remakes. We don't got time for remakes. <laughs> Don't have time for those. People want answers. They want them now. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to start getting cooking on some of those remasters for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, right? I'm going to finally start delivering those special editions if you want to play on the words of Fallout, ultimate editions if you want to keep mm-hmm. brand synergy with Xbox. I'm going to really work to deliver those. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm not going to do this fictional studio as much as I want that to happen. I'm going to call Brian Fargo. I'm going to be like, look, y'all have been working hard on Project Cobalt. It's time to split off some of the team, about 10 to 15 people. Let's start prototyping and a strategy Fallout game similar to what you made for Wasteland 3. Use the tools that you built for Wasteland 3, and instead of calling it Wasteland, call it Fallout this time. I want you to do that for me. And I want this out by 2025. Meanwhile, Obsidian's cooking. I'm going to give everyone the latest date possible. Obsidian gets New Vegas out by 2028. That's a great gap to have right there between spinoff. You had the remasters beforehand, the special editions beforehand. And then you got a new... This would technically be a spinoff. Let's say we'll call it New Vegas 2. right? But you've got new blood in the mainline series in some way, shape, or form. And now I think the wait for... Fallout 5 is a little bit easier. Maybe Bethesda's a bit ahead of schedule. You see him in 2031. But now you can truly build that hype cycle for a new Fallout game, I feel, in a way where people remember why they loved it. They're excited for what's next because now the big five's coming around. And love it or hate it for those listening, while I think Obsidian has made goaded Fallout games, a lot of people do prefer Bethesda's design. And Fallout 4 and 76, while 76 did drop off a cliff, have had a lot of players. They like what Bethesda does in their approach. And much like Fallout 4, I imagine with Fallout 5, it will be that, oh shit moment. Like, here it comes. Like, this is a big deal. So that's how I would lead into it. You know, if we can get that vault studio going by hiring talent to work on a remake in the meantime, like a Fallout 1 remake, and sort of having Todd and Brian and 
Fergus and Josh kind of executive produce, just pretty much lay eyes and hands on the game and say, yeah, this feels good. No, this doesn't feel so good. I don't know how I feel about this. Get the lore masters kind of like Xenomax Online Studio has where they can pick up the phone call with Dustin and say, hey, this thing about Death Claws, uh, how did it go again? If you get all of that together, I think you have a blueprint where Fallout's doing pretty well. And I would do the same thing for Elder Scrolls. People may be wondering why I wouldn't pitch it for that, but the reality is Xbox is loaded with Fallout talent, which is why that is a bigger talking point. You know, yes, Elder Scrolls needs satiation sooner, but they don't have diverse Elder Scrolls talent because Elder Scrolls never left Bethesda, so you kind of got to wait on them for that until that precedent is broken. And maybe, again, they do. There was that rumored RTS a while ago, and that would be awesome. There is ESO, and you could say that did go beyond Bethesda Game Studios. But that is how I would tackle it, personally. That would be my blueprint from now to the next decade. And I think Fallout would thrive under my leadership. <laughs> if I do say so I myself. Only one addendum to your plan. Okay. Well, Every ahead. title has to be announced with the Fallout 4 teaser reveal release date window mm. nine months mm. don't yeah. announce it early <laughs> just okay. say yeah i can get behind these one month later re- like reveal drip feed till launch in november like yep okay. just I do that if that. you do that people will love you forever do not let them know anything else exists <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then you don't want to do what cog wants to do where cog wants to break the internet he wants to show up and say like we're doing Fallout New Vegas too. We don't know when. It's just kind of what they did with the Outer Worlds. Too. We're just, we're doing it. Just keep oh. an eye out. No, no, no. The, you can do that on one condition. It has to be a double megaton. Where mm. it's we're doing Fallout New Vegas too, coming this year. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> gotta be two. Like, gotta be two. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So. Okay. Well, all right. All right. I get you. I hear you, man. I think I think there's a lot of opportunity here. We think that mm. at the end of the day there's stuff to be done they just need to do something <laughs> <Yes>. please <laughs> indeed so we've left them with many ideas to the people from xbox and bethesda who listen to us so maybe they'll take one of these and run the other way with it but until then um it's been a lot of fun getting all this fallout energy off my chest ivan it's been great having you on the show to talk fallout if people want to find you after this episode uh, where can they follow you uh you can follow me anywhere you see anchorman v2 uh, just don't follow the Pornhub one. That's not me. That was a joke <laughs> from 2015. Do not do it. <laughs> so, nah, what? someone got you bad, man. <laughs> oh man! Uh, back in 2015, as soon as they announced Fallout 4, I was like, back then, the, the cool thing to do was Facebook groups, as opposed to being on uh, Twitter. And so mm. I would, I was trolling people really hard on Facebook <laughs> groups. Oh, I was wow. like, day 89, <laughs> Fallout <laughs> supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was bad i had i had people being threats it was <laughs> yeah so that was salute one of them you. <laughs> salute to your messiness yes indeed <laughs> worse than me and cog as always it's fantastic podcasting with you and we hope those of you listening are enjoying your holiday season while we're away slumbering catching up getting ready to produce more shows in 2023 and with that Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed episode 103 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. And we'll see you. Oh, wait. Hashtag. Ooh, I almost forgot because it's a holiday. We got the hashtag. Oh, oh. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? We got to just do Fallout, right? We're, Fallout. we're catching them yeah, at the Fallout tail end here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So use the hashtag Fallout DD. You can tag us on Twitter. Go in the comment section. With that, now it's time to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time on Defining Duke. Peace out. Peace. Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is recorded from the United States of America. The show is conceived by Matthew Mr. Matty Play Schroeder and me, Colin Moriarty, and is written and produced by Matthew Schroeder. Maddie's co-host is Barry Lord Cognito Eversley. Defining Duke's executive producer is Dustin Furman, and the show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. As you know, all of Last Stand Media's shows, including Defining Duke, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer support level on Patreon, and we're thankful for your kindness and generosity.